Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. As always, I'm so grateful that you guys are listening, subscribing and commenting. I appreciate the support. And if you're interested in supporting me further, you can do a one-off donation at Kofi link, at my Kofi link in the description below. Or you can do a monthly donation at my Patreon link in the description below as well. In this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about something a little bit different. Um, as you guys might know, I kind of visited Europe a little bit, um, I think last month, for a little bit of time, not that long. I was there with my family, I just wanted to spend time with them. But instead of going all the way back to Canada and getting a 12-hour jet lag, it was such, it's so difficult for me. It takes me two weeks to recover, it's just a waste of time in my opinion. I told them, let's meet halfway. So we met in Casablanca in Morocco, and then we went over to Portugal, Spain, and I went over to London by myself. I kept it very private because I didn't want a lot of people to know, otherwise people asked me to meet up with them, and I just didn't have the time, so I'm sorry if I, if I didn't let you guys know. But one of the things that I noticed that was really big in London specifically was the Extin Extinction Rebellion. Uh, and there was a lot of protests about it. Uh, a bunch of subway stations and a bunch of areas were closed off because of their protests, peaceful protests and things like that. And I really noticed um, some things come up because of that protest that I wanted to speak to you guys about. Not from a perspective that, you know, I support them, which I do, obviously, I do support them, but from the perspective of how um, people who were in the streets, on the streets, the commoners, if you want to call it, or, or people who were just walking around, or people who live in London, how they were how they perceived the Extinction Rebellion and how, what, what conversations I had with them. Because I thought it was really interesting how different people look at things differently, of course, from their own perspective and from what their life is all about. Right? And so one of the individuals that I was staying with, one of the ladies, uh, one of the girls, was my, one of my really good friends from university from a long time ago, 15 years ago that I've known her. And she has three beautiful kids now. She lives in London because her husband's working at a company there. And so she's originally from Canada, obviously, but I, I stayed with her because I wanted to hang out with her and also see her kids. I hadn't seen them in a while. And so I'm sitting with her and we're talking about the Extinction Rebellion. And one of the things that she speaks about is the fact that she really doesn't care about it. Or the fact that is that she does care about the environment and she does a lot of things I can see. You know, she re recycles, she tries to use disposable nappies and... Um, she tries to use hand-me-downs for their clothes and not use a lot of plastic, etc., etc. She does try to do a lot of things for the environment, but she also said something like, you know, I am a mother, I have three children, I have such a busy schedule. Not only am I taking care of a dog and three kids and my husband, but also, you know, I have so many different things to take care of in terms of finances. We don't have that much money, etc., etc. So my mind is occupied by all of these different things. I rarely have any time to think about the environment. I don't have time to think about all of that stuff. And when the Extinction Rebellion comes in and starts disrupting my schedule in a way where, you know, they're interrupting subway lines or they're disrupting the bus lines or disrupting areas or doing all that stuff, all I can think about is that I just want to get home. I just want to get home so I can get my stuff done. I don't have time to think about all of these things. And so I thought that was really fascinating and obviously really poignant because, of course, when you're worrying about your life and you're worried about your kids, when you're worried about paying the bills, you're not going to be thinking about all of these other things. And that's the way that society has been constructed. And that's what the higher ups want you to do. They don't want you to worry about all these things. They want you to be focused on making money. They want you to be focused on thinking about your problems rather than thinking about the environment so they can do whatever they want and life goes on, right? Another person from London that I met, actually in Chiang Mai, um, she's a brilliant psychologist and she's, uh, she's a single person, so she's not a mother, she's not married or anything. But the same kind of sentiment came from her as well. She's, looking, she's like, I'm a busy individual, I have a lot of work, I wor work long hours, and when I am going home, I don't want to be interrupted by that. I don't want to be interrupted by the Extinction Rebellion. I don't want to be interrupted by protests. I don't want my subway time to be extended and I want to get home. I just want to get home. I don't want to think about all this stuff. I'm tired. I'm exhausted from work. I just want to get home. I don't want to talk about all of these different things. And again, the same kind of sentiments, right? I mean, I'm busy with work. I'm doing things. She's not really worried about money or anything, but she's busy with the things that she likes to do. She's a psychologist. She loves what she does. And so she's working on her stuff and she doesn't have time necessarily to think about, okay, so what am I going to do about the environment or should I, what, what, do, what do the Extinction Rebellion think? She didn't even look into it, even though it was going on in her city, because again, she's focused on her work, she's focused on 
getting um, back home she wants to get back home and she wants to rest and relax so she can redo it over and over again the next day so again the same kind of sentiment came through and I was really fascinated to hear these things because of course I'm looking at it from a perspective where yes I'm busy yes I have a lot of different things to do but I was thinking of it and I actually explained it to the both of them because I wasn't saying that you guys are wrong or anything and, and that I understand completely life is busy life comes up especially with three kids especially with a big busy corporate job things are happening and you don't have time to think about all these things but what I said to them and what I wanted to say to you guys is that the reason I think the Extinction Rebellion is so powerful and why they're trying to do all these things is because they're saying basically that yes you're working on a, on a job yes you're working towards the future but guess what that future is tainted and contaminated and perhaps not even possible right now because in the future because of the fact that oil is going to become too expensive and the fact that there's going to be an energy crisis, a water crisis, an air crisis, a food crisis, all of these different crises, that the fact that you're working towards this future that doesn't actually even exist is what they're fighting for. The fact that we're all working towards the future, we're all working towards a life and we're imagining that you know those people who have children, that their children will have a, a proper life in the future or they will be alive in their 80s, 90s, 100s and they'll be able to enjoy their life when they're retired. But the reality is, and from the perspective of the environmentalists, what they are saying is that, no, I'm sorry, but your life is in danger, and the life of the Earth is in danger, obviously, but in turn, your life is in danger as well, because in the future, the life that you are living right now is endangered. It's basically gonna be extinct. The way that we're living right now, because of the fact that oil is cheap and readily available, the fact that the air is still clean, the fact that global warming hasn't completely hit its its epic or its uh, epoch or the highest point yet, and things like that, we are able to enjoy this life right now. You know, we're able to travel around the world. I'm able to go on a plane and travel around the world without any issues. Where I'm able to fill up my motorbike with really cheap gas and roam around the city without any issues. I can get stuff shipped from all over the world to me without any issues. Um, I can have food from all over the world without any issues. I can breathe in air right now, I'm breathing in air without a mask and that's also not an issue. But all of these non-issues are non-issues right now because we're still kind of at, we still haven't reached the peak of all of this craziness. And what they're saying is that in 2010, 20 years, whatever it might be, even perhaps earlier than that, there's going to be issues and your future that you're working towards, that retirement plan that you're working towards or that future that you're building for your children is kind of in danger right now and that's the reason why they call it the extinction rebellion not only for all the animals and species that are going extinct but our lifestyle and our, our, our and humans in general the way we're living right now that is going to go extinct as well now of course that's my interpretation of it and that's what I mentioned to these individuals and of course they were quiet after that I did not say this to make them quiet I did not say this to make them feel bad but I'm saying this to make them realize that yes of course be do your thing you know live your life and and believe that the future is not tainted or contaminated and that you will have a perfect future but perhaps that's not really the right way of looking at it because that's basically an ostrich way of looking at it you're putting your head in the sand pretending like everything's going to be fine but your children are going to be dealing with the consequences of it right i mean it's going to be our ch our children not mine because i've chosen not to have them for this particular reason but the children in general in the future that are going to be dealing with this contamination this extinction and then perhaps we'll be long gone and we won't have to worry about it but they will be dealing with it unless we do something about it right now because right now is the time to deal with it you can't deal with it when the crisis is already at hand but it has to happen right now now I'm not saying it from a perspective of a person who's really doing a lot I'm trying to do as much as I can but again I just wanted to share these sentiments with you because not to to make you feel feel guilty or to make you feel bad about living on this planet or anything like that just to give you a perspective on what I think, why I think that they are in such a hurry and such a, why they're trying so hard to disrupt routines, to do crazy things and to show people that it's important for us to start paying attention, not because, because <laughs> they hate us or anything like that, or they're crazy, just because I think it's important for us to start paying attention. It is, this is the right time, or it was a, 10 years ago, 20 years ago was the right time, but now is also the right time as well. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Again, I'm not doing this video to make you feel bad or to make you feel guilty or, or anything like that. It's just a perspective that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope, I hope I was able to do it in a very neutral fashion. 
again, if you guys have any questions at all, and again, I, this is my perspective, this is my idea of it. If you have any other perspective on it, please share it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you're interested in supporting me further, you can do that by going to my Ko-fi link, kofi.com slash boomshaka. The link is in the description below. And I shall see you guys the next time around. Bye for now.